But let me put up Parker's response. And right. It is literally the answer. Say what you're saying. They're like evacuate Rafa. After we told you to evacuate the previous five other places, you have yep. tried to go for safety and had to flee again and again. Yep. So we're evacuated to what? The ocean? Because stimulatingly, this is where they're going to wind up. It ain't but so far south you can go. It, it's just not. So. Close. They are not being allowed into Egypt. They are not being allowed into Jordan. They are not being allowed to leave. So, yeah. You tell me, where are they supposed to go? Israel? This is disgusting. And it's very well, very disturbing. Just to put this up again from Parker, Parker is on a roll tonight. Yes. These people blocking aid trusts are some of the worst people. Or it, it's not an opinion. It is a fact. That is absolutely disgusting. It, 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 look, you have your army. You're bombing their area. You're pushing them further south than you possibly can to the border, I'm assuming. Because after that, the game over. Can they eat? No. I mean, I know it's the first hour, but damn. So bomb or starve? Your conclusion is both. gone. Uh, they still don't have water. They still don't have electricity. This is seven months later. 70% of people who have paid the ultimate price for this are the elderly women and children. The world is already asking for this to stop. And Israel has thumbed its nose at everyone. I believe Egypt is um, going to be joining the South African delegation, bringing um, symbolic but uh, complaints to the UN. But yeah, as as. Those those folks that you saw at the border who were stopping aid trucks, they're doing that because they have been indoctrinated year after year after year, their entire life, being told that they, the Palestinian people, are no better than animals and they deserve no rights, they deserve no kindness, compassion, and that every last one of them is guilty. Yes, even the babies. And again, it always turns right back around to Black history because what does that sound like? But anyway, we're moving up. Boy, this hour went by fast. Let's go ahead and get into the last hour. Yeah, we have. Oh, wow. Yeah, this hour went by. Time flies when you're angry. <laughs> yeah. Let's go ahead and get into the White House response to all of this. 
Yeah. Here in Washington, the Biden administration has been working urgently for weeks to stave off a full-scale Israeli invasion of Rafah. At the same time, it's walking a diplomatic tightrope after releasing a critical report on Israeli use of American weapons in the conflict. CBS's Natalie Brand is at the White House with the latest. Good evening, Robert. This nearly 50-page report delivered to Congress is critical of Israel, but also inconclusive, adding to the frustration from the right and left. Republicans accuse the report of providing political cover to the president with his supporters. Democrats say it ducks the critical question at hand after the State Department said given Israel's significant reliance on U.S.-made defense articles, it's reasonable to assess that weapons may have been used by Israel's military in instances, quote, inconsistent with international law, but says it doesn't have complete information to verify. It sends a muddled message because it's inconclusive. The document comes the same week the president warned Israel that the U.S. will not supply offensive weapons for a large-scale military operation in Rafa. Already, the White House has paused the shipment of 3,500 bombs, including 2,000-pound aerial weapons. The White House is worried about the impact they could have in dense urban settings. If Israel is serious about doing a precise targeted counterterrorism operation that can take out Hamas battalions but not cause undue civilian harm, you really don't need munitions of that size anyway. But the administration's move has intensified divisions on Capitol Hill. I think the president's doing the right thing. This is terrible policy, and it's bad for the United States. Responding to Republican criticism, the White House says the president is still standing with Israel as they fight Hamas, but also making clear how Israel defends itself matters. The administration saying it does not want to see any more civilians killed. Robert? Natalie Brand, thanks.